it was so cool to see uh, your vision because I don't know if you remember, but we had a meeting at the very beginning and you sat me down and you were like, this is what we're going to do. It's going to happen over five years. And you did it. Do you remember that at all or how your goals from the beginning sort of morphed, but how much has stayed intact from so early on? Yeah, I, I think it's like, I mean, the show makes me think about, to use a kind of soccer metaphor, like, look, we just took a lot of shots on goal because, uh, A, we didn't, you know, we knew what we wanted to do and we knew which audience we wanted to reach. But, you know, we had to try a lot of stuff. At the same time, like, stuff was, you know, things change around you, right? Like, then it was Facebook Live, maybe it's Twitch, maybe it's Discord, maybe like TikTok didn't even exist until two years after that. Uh, and so I think if you stay consistent with the higher level vision and you're willing to try a lot of stuff, uh, then that's that. And, you know, I, I, looked at, I looked at you as somebody kind of in our demo and in our audience. And so I was curious about kind of like what you responded to and what was interesting to you. And you always had some like, hack of like what, what's causing things to grow now and later and stuff like that. Um, but I think it's, you know, it's hard to stay focused on the like on the big picture. And I think if you watch companies or sometimes you even watch people who are influencers in the space, it feels like, oh, they're over here and they're all about this. Now they're all about crypto. Now they're all about this. Now they're all about that. And they're just kind of trend hoppers. And I see famous people um, do that and less famous people. And I think for us, those weren't really trends. It was kind of more like, we knew there was an opportunity to build something that looked like a different sports network that was more in tune with a different type of audience with the whole generational shift. And so, you know, you're willing to try a lot of different things to, to hit that. Totally. And the thing about overtime too, and I'm sure what you've found is just that the engagement is so much higher when people can connect to a brand as opposed to it being, you know, I mean, you know, a Disney logo isn't a great example, but something like ESPN, right? You can't associate a face or names so much to that brand. There are broadcasters, sure, and they have shows, but it's different when you can associate a group of talented individuals to that brand. Yeah, I think building brand in in what is like traditionally kind of media business is interesting because a lot of a lot of traditional media is about you know getting you information. So let's say you know you're a Knicks fan and you know it's 15 years ago and you want to read about the Knicks or 20 years ago and you can read about it in the Daily News or the Post or wherever else, Newsday, you know, all New York newspapers, as an example, or a bunch of websites. But at the end of the day, what you want is information about the Knicks. You, you don't actually care about what, what that entity is that's providing you. And if all those went out of business, then there'd be three more people telling you uh, about that. And I think for overtime, you know, we wanted to connect with our audience and, and be the brand rather than be a pass through about someone else's brand. And even if you go all the way to now when we're, you know, creating our own league and, and things around that, like it's about building a brand as opposed to just building a place for information. Uh, and it's also about, yeah, you have to know people. I mean, you can follow anybody who works for overtime and you can see stuff that happens in the office when there was an office, you know, you can <laughs> who the different personalities are athletes meet them. Uh, I think because social gives you this kind of window into something, it's almost kind of weird to have a, a brand that, that people don't know or don't know who works there or can't get their hands around. And, and that was definitely a goal from day one. I almost think of overtime as like, almost like a big influencer composed of lots of different pieces uh, below it. The same way I think of it as kind of like a big media company in some ways on the media side, but it's also composed of Snapchat and TikTok and Twitter and Twitch and YouTube and you know Instagram and all these pieces below it.